audio jungle. What's up, everybody? What's going on? This is another series, you know, another episode of the Life Johnny Podcast. Everybody, get ready. We're going on a plane. We're traveling all the way to Europe. We're going to London. And we're with my guy, Anthony Anthony uh, Knowles. How's it going? I'm good, man. How are you? I'm doing great, brother. I'm doing great. It's good to have you on the show. Um, how do you feel? Yeah, man. Good as can be. Um, I mean, crazy times at the moment for everyone. You know, a lot of people stuck at home right now. Not much to do. Um, but, you know, I'm busy, man. I've been running this new, you know, site got com- up and coming, online film school. Been staying in shape, working out, eating good. Yeah. I'm drinking, this isn't dirty water, by the way. This is lemon-infused uh, salt water, you know, because I'm fasting until tomorrow. So, okay, uh, just keeping my electrolytes up. Um, there you so, go. Focusing on health, focusing on work, keeping busy. Been good. Man, Anthony is one of like the one of the hardest working filmmakers I've seen in the industry. And uh, you know, I was watching him on YouTube and stuff and noticed how hard he was working. And he's such a you know, young dude that's just like just grinding, just doing his thing. And you know, we could we first met when I, you know, I reached out to him to see, you know, you can come out to Atlanta to come teach some of my um, you know, uh, people on my team. Came out, uh, did a great job. And we've been friends ever since and uh, just been connecting with him and you know, awesome guy, man. So I love what you're doing. You know, let's dive, yeah, kind of talk a little bit about, you said you're working on a course. I seen you, you like, you went off of social media for a bit. Like what's, you, you've been in the zone, bro. So like, <laughs> that's yeah, <helps> <laughs> do, you know do you know how it all started? Like, so obviously been traveling now for the past three years, making these videos. And what happened was I was in Vietnam last year and I had my 23rd birthday. And for some reason, I just started thinking back on how quick time had gone by, like in all the years I was traveling. And I was like, shit, man, like I'm like approaching, although I'm still young, right? But I felt like I was like, time was going by so fast. Mm. And although I was traveling, I was doing all these things and it's great. I started to wanna be able to support myself completely, start my own business. Cause I very much have that business mindset, right? Right. And over the years, I've had so many questions from people, you know, how do you do this? How do you do that? How I was able to um, start traveling the world by 20 years old, like two years after leaving high school. All these things are like things that people want to know. Young creators want to know how I do it. And so about eight months ago, I started putting together a course, right? Like, so, you know, everything from what camera to buy uh, to, you know, how you use that equipment properly. So, you know, how you create, if you use that equipment, how to edit, how to make these videos, you know, that you see, how I actually do it from start to finish, uh, how I travel the world, how I, you know, land big clients like Airbnb, the NBA, um, stuff like that. And so started putting that all together and I just about finished it like a month ago, all the content. And now I'm basically getting online because I have a big incentive now to teach people how I actually do it. And I want to give back and I want people to succeed. I want people um, to do well in this, in this space. Um, and the world's changing, you know, the world is changing in such a big way with the online space. Now, what used to be, you know, 10 years ago, um, it was very hard to travel the world, make videos today. It's becoming a lot more common and, uh, young people are dominating this space now. Um, yeah. you know, people are making five figures with consumer, you know, uh, cameras. Whereas back in the day before sort of 2010, um, I've been in the game 10 years now. But before then, or around that time, the space was dominated by these uh, companies, uh, these big production companies, production houses. Now it's production houses and production companies still exist, but there's a shift happening now into the individual, the young, hungry individual with mm. the consumer-based camera, you know, um, really killing it in the game. So I want to teach that side of things as well. That's what's up, man. What And what, like, I mean, shoot, you said you're about to launch the course. What are What do you feel like... When you started creating this course and you were looking at every, I know you did your market research, checking around on other courses to see what people were doing, 
to make sure you have the best course? Like, what makes your course different than everybody else out there? So it's called the online film school. And um, so at the online film school, I truly believe that there's an emphasis on really mastering your craft. And so the thing is with a lot of other courses I've seen, they'll teach the fundamentals. They'll teach you how to do this and that. They'll teach a bit of creativity, you know, how to make a music video, how to do this. But I, I truly believe that my work can stand up to some of the best, you know, individual solo filmmakers out there. And right. I, I truly believe that. And my visuals speak for themselves, you know, and um, to get that look, to get um, the production quality, the, the really high end production quality, you really need to have the tools. You need, really need to know the uh, structure process that I actually go through. It's not just about the visuals, it's, it's about the editing, it's about the sound design. It's about how all, the, how all these things tie into each other. And in my course, there's a massive emphasis on really creating visuals that stand out. And, you know, in this game, it is competitive. There's a lot of people doing it. And it is oversaturated, I'd say, with, you know, a lot of average videographers or below average videographers. And there's, for me, is, is a much a focus on mastering that and becoming the best you can possibly be. Being so good that your work just really, really uh, shines and stands out. And so there's a big emphasis um, on that. And also my course is very editing heavy as well. And I, I do believe that a lot of things I'm teaching right now um, are not being taught by a lot of people as well. Um, so, yeah, I think that's the main one. But also there's a lot of other benefits as well. Um, I do teach business. Um, I also teach people exactly from start to finish how I, um, you know, take on certain shoots. So, for example, I did a recent project in London with a DJ. I literally show the entire uh, process, the shooting, the editing, the planning um, of that entire video. So it's interactive. People can actually learn. They can look at a video and I show them exactly how to make it from start to finish. Why I do the things I do, how I plan it out, how I interact with the clients. Um, you know, everything is covered. Uh, it's fully inclusive. And, um, you know, it's, it's high level filmmaking. It's high level stuff. So, but also beginners. You know, it's good for beginners too. It can take someone who knows nothing and then take them to a proficient level where they can start going out there and actually applying that knowledge and making money. So, you know, it's, it's diverse. That's awesome. So yeah, yeah. So it's for beginners and advanced. Yeah. yeah. That's awesome, man. Yeah. I, yeah, I was seeing, checking out some of the stuff you've been posting and yeah, you were diving into some cool photo motion capture. Doing Yeah, I was like, oh yeah, he's, he's doing it differently. A lot of <laughs> no other courses are doing that right now. <laughs> yeah you know that's the important thing is to have that unique selling point and i believe that we do have that and you know i'm teaching things that a lot of people just still aren't teaching i'm surprised actually that more people aren't doing this mm -hmm. and so i took it upon myself to start you know teaching it myself and then also a big benefit of joining is the fact that you know i help people along the way so we have an exclusive facebook community i host weekly live streams where I critique people's work, I answer any questions. And that's a big thing as well. You know, something I wish I had when I was first starting out was like a mentor or someone to um, correct me on my mistakes and guide me, you know, in the correct way. Because I, it, in all honesty, yeah, I've been in this game for 10 years, but it shouldn't have really taken me 10 years to get here. Um, you can streamline that process by just not, um, you know, by just approaching things in the right way having the mentors, having the information laid out in front of you. For me, you know, back in the day when I was starting out in 2010, there was no resources on this stuff. I had to make the mistakes. I spent a lot of money, a lot of time, you know, making those mistakes. And so, you know, this is going to give you that streamlined, you know, learning process, which I feel is so important. Yeah, cutting that learning curve so you can be able to get there quicker. I always talk about that. You either can walk to New York City or you can drive to New York City. So what you want to do? <laughs> that's a great analogy. There we go. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, man, that's awesome, brother. So let the folks know. So talk a little bit about, like, you know, you growing up and just, you know, filmmaking in general, how it became a, a love of yours and then how you got involved with Jabril and stuff like that. Yeah, so it's a, it's a pretty crazy story. It would take me a while to explain the whole thing in proper detail, so I'll kind of summarize it. Okay. Um, so it all started about 2009, um, and I was about 12, 12 years old, 
and me and my brother at the time uh, he's not with us anymore uh, god bless his soul but we were you know together on the computer and we were um so we were just put messing around and we found some uh, parkour and free running videos you know parkour and free running it's like jumping around doing tricks that kind of thing and uh naturally at 12 13 you start doing this we're doing backflips we're filming it on our mobile phones I, it wasn't like this it was you know not like these phones today it's like a little mafia phone you know filming each other showing our friends and that soon progressed you know over the years through my teenage years i actually got a proper camera when i was about 15 like a canon t2i which was my first real camera and i started making videos that built up to me basically leaving high school in the uk and the us it's a bit different so um it's not like high school and then co college is basically university but here you you have high school and then you have like college and then you have university and it's like two years of college but it's like you guys is high school i believe is like our college so i left basically high school slash college uh, about 18 and i started going freelance in london um and so doing that picking up some clients here and there making a bit of money but you know Sometimes I go about work for like a month or two. I didn't have the business mindset. Um, I had the skill, but not really the business mindset, which is something I got later uh, through learning and different things. And then when I was about 19 um, slash 20, I was on Facebook one day scrolling through, seeing an ad, Jabril, um, as we know, my good friend Jabril. He was there looking for a filmmaker in London, looking for someone to come travel with him and his team, uh, making these cool videos. I applied for that and then uh yeah he hits me back we get talking a couple months later boom i fly out to thailand and then pretty much the rest is history you know i've been traveling now for the past three years obviously not right now but you know hopefully that will resume again soon um but yeah it's just been a crazy ride that's how it's happened um a lot has led up to that um but that's ba a basic summary of how it happened um i've worked really really hard a bit of luck does come into it, but ultimately it was down to two things. It was uh, networking with the right individuals and getting those connections, and then also having the skill to be able to provide value to those good connections, right? How can I provide value to someone like Jabril? And then once I provide that value, the value is then returned to me in the form of, you know, all these opportunities, which is basically, that kickstarted my career. That was really the kickstart, and that took, what, 13 years old? till 20 so seven years before i started actually uh breaking into some good stuff before that it was just kind of up and down you know that's that says a lot right there like you said of value you providing value first a lot of people want money now a lot of people want it now they want you know our generation is a impatient generation and what would you say about that? Like, emphasize on the value aspect of pro providing that before you get get before you receive, and how important that is. Yeah, no, super important, man. You know, I've um, I've interacted with some pretty influential people now, some successful people. I'm around a lot of success now, and I didn't get it at first, but um, I'll tell you a little story. So one time I was about 19, and I was in the street one day, and. I randomly came across a guy like filming and doing magic tricks in the street and I started talking to him and uh, I didn't know who he was at all. But at the time I was looking for opportunities, whatever I could get. Right. And I was like, Hey man, like, um, don't know who you are, but you know, if you ever need someone to film videos for you, uh, let me know. And so we exchanged details and then boom, when I get home, I find out this guy has like millions and millions of followers. His name's Julius Dean. Um, I, I don't work with him anymore, but you know, we're still friends. And he's, you know, he's big online. And uh, again, that was, it reinstates the point. It's like, I was just there to provide the value, right? I wasn't trying to get anything from him. This goes for so many different things. Whenever you're around successful people, you're around influential people, the best thing you can do is think to yourself, what is the best way I can help this person? What is the best way I can bring value to this person using the skills that I have? So in my case, obviously it's filmmaking is creating visuals and we're in a world now where many people need um promotions in the form of video right and so that's the value i can provide for them and then ultimately it does return to you in abundance if you can if you can do that not always but most of the time that's just kind of how it works so and that's what how it's worked for me you know i bring value to other people they bring value to me same with the course 
you know i bring value to people and i get value back and that's just the way the world works really and mm -hmm. so yeah it's, it's super important and i'm all about that you know i'm all about bringing as much value to people as possible this video is video if it's my teachings it's my teachings i ultimately want the best for people i want filmmakers to excel in this world because you can if you have the right tools if you have the right knowledge if you have the right guidance and there's a lot of misinformation out there at the moment and i'm trying to basically set that straight so that is awesome man that's awesome that mindset and how old are, how old are you 23. only 23 years old folks and he's like late this year all right, 20, <laughs> he's crushing it and it's just a mentality and it's like you got to keep going like you were saying you got to like you, you just look you went out and looked for those opportunities you kept you didn't just sit at home like dang like what do i do like you went out and found it you went out and searched for it and like same same thing happened to me when i like got out the nfl and i was like yo what do i do with this i want to get into filming but what do i do had to go do free gigs opportunities filming for free and opportunities came out of that and so like that is huge bro like i respect the heck out of it and that's why you know that's I feel, you know that's when i saw you on watching on youtube and seeing what you've done i'm like so i could tell his heart is like different he has a different type of heart than most people you know so no oh, kudos to that brother so next thing is i guess we're gonna kind of go left field with this what's your favorite restaurant in london oh in london you know what's crazy i haven't actually been to many fancy places in london because when i'm going to fancy restaurants usually i'm abroad or well, I'm usually traveling, I'm usually doing some jobs. Um, there was this one place I went to in London that was really nice. Um, I forget the name of it though. I'll have to hit you back with it. But there's a, uh, a good place I went with my girlfriend at the time. This was like two years ago. I went to the Shard uh, rooftop and mm -hmm. they got a nice restaurant in there. Uh, that was pretty good. Um, you know, I have as why you usually have, if I go to a nice restaurant, I usually get a nice ribeye, ribeye steak, dry aged. There you go. Um, but like, yeah, I'll, I'll have to let you know the name of the other one I went to. It was, uh, it was in the London video, the London I, uh, video I made, it was in there. That was a really good restaurant. But most of the time when I'm at good restaurants, I'm usually abroad. Um, I'm usually away. And Panama has probably some of the best restaurants I've been to personally, Panama. Panama City, no lie, no lie. They really got <laughs> some amazing restaurants in Panama City. Mm, they definitely do, and that's my mother's hometown. So it's like, yeah, I love yeah, it. It yeah, was love ridiculous. It. Probably the best food I ever had was in this place called Sapa de la Coco or something. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, it's been our Panama video. Um, the best Jamaican food I've ever had in my life. It was unbelievable. Yeah, it was, it was, <laughs> it was unbelievable. The food is so natural down there. I love it. It's not yeah. a no chemicals <laughs> like good produce. yeah that latin america definitely has some good produce down there they do they yeah. definitely do so i just want to make sure like so are you in london currently you're not in, yeah, london. I'm in london right now i'm stuck yeah. i'm stuck in oh, london. Okay. trying to leave i'm trying to leave london dude but i'm uh, i'm stuck <laughs> here for probably at least another month man yeah i heard they're opening up opening up travel in most different places beginning Jul july i believe june yeah, june I believe so i believe so yeah yeah, we'll I feel, I feel, yeah, I feel the same way. Like, you feel trapped. You're like, yo, I want to get out. <laughs> I want to go travel. I want to. Yeah, like, dude. It's crazy. Soon come, soon come. Right, right. So, what what would be a quote that you can leave? Well, actually, what what could people do? I guess like that are inspired by you. Obviously, you got the film course. But what are some things how people can get involved and get started in filming? Get your phone. And if you haven't got a camera, you don't need a, you don't even need a camera. See, see, see this phone right here. Or well, most people have a phone that actually has a really good camera on it. So if you do want to get into filming and you're not hundred percent like in, or you haven't got the money to spend on the camera, get your phone, start making videos with this. Um, do as much research as you can. Skillshare has some great um, stuff. If you want to learn the basics of filmmaking, you know, do your research and just start making videos. That's the best advice I can give anyone. You know, um, it's like anything in life. If you want to be good at something, you got to do it. If you want to be good at jujitsu, you got to do it. I've been doing recently, right? If you want to be good at football, you got to practice. You know, and this is what it's about. So, yeah, go out there, practice, 
learn as much as possible and apply that and then build your way up. Uh, once you get decent on, with using one of these, maybe you can step it up um, and go from there. That's what's up, brother. What would you say? So it takes, what they say, it only takes 10,000 hours to like effectively learn a skill, right? Yeah. Like 10,000. I thought they say to master a skill. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, th there is definitely some truth to that. Um, I probably, I would say I'm probably 10,000 hours into editing now um using adobe premiere probably not filming though because I, I film a lot less than i edit um but i think you can get pretty good at your um at something with a lot less than ten thousand hours I, I do believe you can get really good at something uh, you, they say that you can pick up a basic skill to a basic level within about 20 to 40 hours of mm -hmm. practice like you get a feeling oh I'm, i kind of got the hang of this you know a little bit um obviously it takes a lot more time to master but you can pick up basic things uh, within like 20 hours but yeah oh, that's, that is, enjoy the process that's the most important thing if you don't, is, enjoy, don't do it right yeah you, <laughs> that's true joking. this this is not a game you want to get into if you don't enjoy it it's just not do something else that, be a banker true, you want to money. like yeah i have no <laughs> <Is that Leo? laughs> if you want to make money if you if, if your only interest is to start stacking then I, I wouldn't say filmmaking is the best for that because it takes a long time to get the skill set, you know, to start making big money. It takes some time. Yeah, I believe it. Uh, definitely does. Yeah, overnight, like, you don't normally see overnight success. I mean, if there is, kudos to them, but I've, everybody that I've seen has just been grinding for hours. Oh, and I, hey, and just for the record, I'm not there yet either. I'm not anywhere near where I want to be right now. So I'm still on this whole process as well. So, you know, I'm still grinding away. All right, ever learning process, ever learning process. Um, what would you, so we're getting towards the end of the convo now. So we always on the Life Journey series have a guest give a inspiring quote that can help impact someone for the rest of their lives. What quote would that be that you may live by or something that you may take from um, individual? Don't live your life like your life is gonna last forever. I see, I see people, I see people doing that shit a lot, man. And uh, it's it's important you understand that because, man, people people just be living like that. There's no end. Do you know what I mean? That like shit's gonna end one day. Or hey, you might not even live to be an old man or an old lady, or whatever. Like your shit might be cut short, man. So like, start getting out there. Do as much as you can in this space of time that you have. That we call life do as much as you can um why not you know why not just push the boundaries um you know be a person of excellence get yourself out there and uh yeah get it done man enjoy life but also see see how far you can push things you know um don't be average mm. yo he's anthony dropping dimes in the podcast <laughs> straight dimes in the podcast brother that's what's up yeah whoever listening make sure y'all take notes on that because I remember I spoke with an individual in Ethiopia about that too. And like, they said the same thing. Like, if you're not living your life to the full potential, like each and every single day, man, like you're not giving your all like, yo, bro, kudos to that. Like that's, you're an example of that. Keep doing that. Everybody's listening. Make sure you do that too, because this, this world we live in, everybody's seeing the success now on Instagram, on Facebook. Like you said, you, I love when you talk about the uh, dopamine, like the happy, like when oh, you're yeah. on yeah. Oh man, this guy. Yeah, you go. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's important, man. Don't yeah. Don't stay in your like. Don't look at what the other guys doing, man. That's a big thing too. Just focus on what you're doing, and um, don't worry about the other guy. Mm, that's yeah, really tough. I don't call any of these people. People ask me all the time. Oh, did you see what this guy did, or what this guy put out the video, or this course, or whatever? No, I'm just like. If I'm running 100 meters, I ain't looking to my left. I ain't looking to my right. I, I sure as hell ain't looking behind me. I'm yeah. fucking, I'm trying to get to that finish line. So yeah, don't don't worry about the other guy or the other girl. I love that. That's a great quote right there. There's a book called, I don't know if you've read it yet, Atomic Habits by James Clear. I'll write it down. That like every dopamine, everything that we've you've talked about before or have, you know, maybe researched, like this guy talks about it. And it's such an interesting read. I'm almost finished with it. Atomic Habits by James Clear. He talks about dopamine and sit down for sure. Um, 
But uh, yeah, man. Oh yeah, give the folks like two books that you've that you've been reading as well too that uh maybe you know can inspire them, help inspire them. Okay, um, so I read a lot of book, a lot of different books. Um, but I, I would say the best probably for self help is um, for me anyway has been the Four Agreements by Don Miguel Ruiz. Um, which has been very useful. It's a great foundation for anyone. I, I, I truly believe that it's one of the, if you haven't read a single book, read that book. It's, uh, it's, it's, it's amazing foundationally for your life, I believe. Um, there's a lot of other good ones, but I think um, How to Win Friends and Influence People by Dale Carnegie is also a great one as well. Um, it should reinstate what you should already know, but it's good to kind of take notice of it. Um, I think that's a good book as well. It's a very popular book. A lot of people have read it. Um, but yeah, those two books are great. There's a lot of other ones, and I, I don't just read self-help. I read a lot of other stuff as well, but for self-help, those two are really good, I think. Yeah, those are some solid books for sure. And you said The Four Agreements book is about who again? Don Miguel Ruiz. Yeah, probably, probably my favorite book of all time, I would say. It's, it's, it's changed my life in ways I couldn't even describe. Um, yeah okay i'll make sure yeah i check that one out definitely yeah man well let everyone know like plug yourself like let them know about the site the social media you know what things to follow okay so yeah if you want to follow my personal instagram it's ant underscore creative uh if you want to follow uh what we're doing at the online film school and you're interested in filmmaking learning filmmaking we have an instagram page at the online film school or alternatively we have our website which is the online film school.com go check it out uh if you're interested thank you fantastic anthony thank you so much for coming on the show today brother man thank we you, bro. yeah man and uh keep crushing it i can't wait to see like once you launch that thing bro like i know it's success um with it i know you, it's gonna like take off because again like Y'all go on his page, bro. Like, see the stuff he's been posting. Like, it's it's so different. It's so different from all the courses I've either purchased or have seen. So, good stuff, man. Appreciate you. I appreciate it, bro. Thank you so much. Take care. Thank you for listening to the Life Journey Podcast with Quentin Gauz. To find out more and to follow the journey, visit Quentin's Instagram at QGauz or our business page at iron underscore visuals. For full recaps of this show, find us on iTunes and the Google Play Store. Thank you for tuning in.